Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's dive in. First of all, a quick look at the scene setup. I've got a plane that I've formed into a backdrop. I've got some lighting pointing directly at that backdrop. And then I've got three point lighting pointing at my focal point, which is a Suzanne model. And then I've got the camera pointing at Suzanne. So this is the camera view here. Let's just turn off those overlays so you can see better. And let's switch over to the shading tab so we can get into shading. Just zoom in a little bit. Let's enable viewport shading. And just a reminder, I will be using the cycles render engine with my GPU doing the processing. So there we have Suzanne ready to go. And we need to start by applying a new material. And that will be with a principled shader and a material output. Now we've got uh, several things to set up here. We have got the basic white bone. We've got some bone detail, some fractures to give it a bit more realism, and then some shading as well. So let's make a start on the white bone. <clears throat> Excuse me. We will add a texture coordinate by pressing Shift A and searching for texture coordinate. We'll add two Voronoi textures. So add one and then press Shift D to duplicate that. Take the vector from the object and plug that into the vector of both of those Voronoi textures. We're going to add a couple of color ramps. And take the distance from each of the Voronoi textures and plug those into the color ramps. We're then going to add a couple of bump nodes, one here and one here. Take the color from the color ramps and plug that into the height of the top one. Take the color from the bottom color ramp and plug that into the height of the first one. And then take the normal output from the bump node, the bottom bump node, and plug that into the top one. And then we're going to take that and plug that into the normal of the principal shader. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, that's obviously way too much there going on, so let's make some adjustments. On the scale on the top Voronoi, we're going to increase that to 15. We're going to change the interpolation mode on the color ramp to B spline. You see that's made a difference already. Then with the bottom Varanoid texture, change the scale to 100. Change the interpolation mode on the color ramp to B spline. Bring the black over and crunch in the white quite far. Let's go for around there, I think. Now for the strength on the bottom bump node, 0 0.05. And for the strength on the top bump node, 0 0.2 and the distance of 0 0.01. So what we've got there basically is if I isolate this bump node, we've got lots of texture going on within that. And that's good. So that's our white uh, white bone texture. So let's frame that. Name it. And oh, let's get that principled shader in there as well. Now for the principled shader on the white bone, we can probably increase that a bit. 
and maybe even take it a little bit yellowish very tiny amount you can you can hardly tell the difference for the specular change that to 0.25 we'll be plugging something into the roughness later on so we'll leave that for now and everything else is going to stay the same next up let's do the bone detail so for that we're going to need another um, principled shader Oops. so let's actually just search for that and it will be the same settings as the other one so specular of 0.25 we'll plug something in the roughness and we'll plug something into the bump in a minute now we also need a noise texture We need a couple of color ramps. And we need a couple of bump nodes. Now we're going to take the object value from the texture coordinate, plug that into our noise texture. Uh, we're going to take the factor from that into both of those color ramps. We're going to take the top color ramp and plug that into the base color. We're going to take this color ramp and plug that into the roughness. And we're also going to use that to drive the roughness in our first principal shader as well. So we can plug that in there. Take the color and pl plug it into the height value of that first bump node and take the normal from here and plug that into the normal from the second bump node and plug that into the principal shader. Okay, let's make some changes. Let's actually plug this one directly into the output so we can see what's going on. Now for the scale here, we're going to leave it at five. We're going to increase the detail to 10 and the roughness to one. So all the way up. For the bottom color ramp, we're going to change this black value and increase it to a light gray. Let's say 0.325. We're also going to bring that in to about there. And we're going to take the white and bring that over to about here. For the strength on the first bump node, we're going to go for 0.1 and we're going to leave the set it, the rest of the settings there and the other settings here the same. For this top bump node, we're going to find ourselves a brown value. So if we kind of go for an orange there and then decrease the value, hopefully we should end up with the kind of brown we want. Bring that over. Oops, not the whole thing, just the node. To about there. We're going to move our cursor over the color block, press Control C to copy it. Select the white one and Control V over the um, thingy, color block. But we're going to increase that value a little bit and then decrease the saturation continue doing that until you get uh, like a creamy color might even need to move the hue around a bit to work into the yellows I think about there should do us so I'll leave that there for a couple of seconds if you want to take a note of those numbers oops there you go and we're going to bring that over to about there and you can see it's much more bone color than the original white now that's everything to do with the bone detail so we'll frame that name 
name it bone detail and what we're going to do is add a mix shader plop that in there plug the bottom set the white bone into the bottom slot and the bone detail into the top and you can see we can now move between the two but what I'd like to do is control that using a factor so what we're going to do here is grab ourselves a geometry node and a color ramp <clears throat> excuse me we're going to take the pointiness plug that into the factor and then take that and plug that into the factor of the mix shader now if I isolate this you'll be able to see what's happening when I do it we're going to take the black value and move it across and then we're going to take the white value and move that across until they're very close together almost touching and you can see what's happening it's basically making creases and crevices and holes and things like that much darker so it's going to apply more of the bone detail to those layers and leave the whiter areas with the white bone areas so it almost looks like it's being it's been uh, in soil for a while and it's got sort of dirt within those areas those regions let's frame that and we'll call that shading now what we need is some fractures for a little bit more realism so let's go down here for that we're going to need a noise texture a mix RGB bear in mind the later versions of blender so I think about 3.4 and onwards now just have a generic mix node and you've got to select um, the different things from there we also need a Voronoi texture and a color ramp now let's plug this or let's isolate this so you can see what's going on we're going to connect the distance from the Voronoi texture to the color ramp we're going to take the color from the mix RGB and plug that into the vector of the Voronoi texture we're going to take the color from the noise texture and plug that into color 1 of the mix RGB connect up the object value from the texture coordinate to the vector and then we'll make some adjustments now they're not looking very much like fractures or cracks or anything at the moment oh actually we also need to take the object from the texture coordinate and plug that into color 2 of this mix RGB node okie dokie so noise texture we're going to leave the scale at 5 increase the detail to 15 which is the highest leave the other two as they are going to increase the factor on the mix RGB to 0.75 and leave that as mix going to change the feature output from F1 to distance to edge and they immediately start looking more like cracks and fractures we'll change the scale to 2.4 to spread them out a bit more and we're going to change the interpolation mode on the color ramp to constant and then we're going to crunch the white right over until you literally just have those cracky lines it's probably a tiny bit too much let's go for 0.015 there we go so that's giving us our cracks but we need to basically include those in some bump detail from one of these two and the best one to go for will be the bone detail so we're going to take the output from the color ramp and we're going to take it up and plug it into the height of this second bump node on the bone detail layer now so you can see that's done something we'll go back to the mix shader and I'll zoom in and you should be able to just make out those hairline cracks if they're not super visible 
you can always go back to the color ramp on that uh, layer and just mess around with them a bit more or you could even try and uh, change the values over here now uh, let's just frame that one so we know what it does and that is basically your aged bone shader there's obviously a lot going on here so I can't zoom in too much but let's render that out and see how we get on And there we have it, our aged bone material. And here you can see all the detail of those fissures and cracks. You can see the darker areas in the recesses as if things have had time to gather or grow in there, some kind of dirt. And then obviously those that pointiness geometry node is helping give us that sort of bleached white look wherever there's a lot of uh, geometry coming out from the object. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that one and will make use of it in the future. Uh, please remember to like the video before you go today and of course subscribe if you'd like notifications about future videos that I release. In the meantime, thanks for watching.